हाय गाइस दिस इज चेतन फ्रॉम द पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मेडिकल एजुकेशन एंड रिसर्च पीजीआई चंडीगढ़ एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द पैथोजेनिक क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ एनीमिया एंड इन माय प्रीवियस वीडियो आई हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द हाउ टू हाउ वी अप्रोच टू डायग्नोस द एनीमिया यानी आई हैव डिस्कड अबाउट द लेबोरेटरी अप्रोच टू डायग्नोस एनीमिया इफ यू नॉट वॉच दिस वीडियो देन प्लीज वॉच दिस वीडियो बिकॉज दिस वीडियो इज वेरी वेरी हेल्पफुल फॉर यू दिस इज द बेसिक वीडियो ऑफ द पैथोजेनिक क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ एनीमिया एंड वी क्लासीफाई एनीमिया ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ laboratory diagnosis so this video is going to be very helpful before uh, watching this video you you sh- I, i i i recommend you should watch this video but if you not uh, uh, but in this video i also cover some some basic information related to the anemia so uh, let's get started so without any further delay let me introduce i am chetan and i am currently working in pgi chandigarh so let's get started the pathogenic classification of anemia guys this video is going to be very long for you because uh, pathogenic classification of anemia is a broad broad topic and i have to discuss about it in detail so let's get started and you can also connect me on insta handle if you have any query and please use the comment box for your any query for your any questions so let's get discussed so in the previous video i have discussed about how we approach the anemia in laboratory approach so today we are going to discuss about how to approach microcytic anemia yani pathogenic classification of microcytic anemia in the previous videos i have discussed about anemia classification in detail and uh, and uh, and in the previous video i have also discussed how we classify anemia like based on cell morphology or uh, like normocytic hypochromic and like normocytic microcytic macrocytic and based on uh, different types of classification system are uh, are recommended for the uh, classification of anemia so in this video i am going to discuss about the pathogenic classification of uh, microcytic anemia so pathogenic classification of microcytic anemia we, we uh, there are there are comes under different types like disorders of iron metabolism disorders of iron metabolism like iron deficiency anemia and anemia of chronic disorder so iron deficiency anemia comes under the disorder of iron metabolism and next we disorder of globin chain synthesis means uh, there is a defect in the synthesis of hemoglobin you know hemoglobin is a conjugated protein which uh, is made up of heme and globin globin is a protein part and heme is the uh, you know iron heme is the elemental part so uh, hemoglobin there there is no defect in the hemoglobin molecule but there is a defect in the globin chain synthesis means the iron level is iron level is normal but the patient is still anemic because of there is no synthesis of globin chain so there is a defect in globin chain synthesis you you also heard, uh, heard about the thalassemia as like alpha thalassemia beta thalassemia and thalassemia is also a broad topic because under thalassemia there comes under like minor major thalassemia so hbe syndromes like a e e e b beta thalassemia and hbc syndrome guys thalassemia is very very interesting and very important topic for you and i i am covering in this video thalassemia in detail so hbc syndrome ac or cc and next is sideroblastic anemia guys if you heard about uh, you know sidro in any book if you if you heard about the sidro it, it means related to the iron metabolism so sidro based blastic anemia uh, in this uh, we have discussed about uh, discussing about uh, hereditary sidroblastic anemia acquired sidroblastic anemia sidroblastic anemia can be congenital or acquired so hereditary acquired refractory anemia with ringed sideroblast because there is a formation of ringed in the in the in the rbc precursor there is a formation of uh, ring which is made up of iron and this uh, this this stain with the, uh, our staining solution and this is known as the ringed sideroblast and myeloproliferative disorders also can be occur like mds and last but not the least is lead intoxication so due to lead on intoxication there is also chance of anemia so let's get discuss about some points about iron deficiency anemia so in iron deficiency anemia there is a deficiency of iron so our red cell distribution width increases and our serum ferritin level goes decreases and peripheral blood smear peripheral blood 
film so anisocytosis and poikilocytosis in iron deficiency anemia and uh, clinical future of patient in IDA yani iron deficiency anemia as cholenchia angular choroiditis and thinning of hair and fecal tocot blood testing should be done in all patient to rule out the uh, to rule out the gastrointestinal bleeding so fecal tocot but if if fecal occult blood uh, comes positive then we also or a history of GI bleeding so we do also gastro gastrointestinal endoscopy if fecal occult blood comes positive or any history of GI bleeding and in IDA total iron binding capacity also increases and blood film so microcytic hyperchromic and this is a type of microcytic anemia so blood film so microcytic hypochromic hypochromic is due to because of iron deficiency and uh, sources of upper uh, you know sources of upper gastrointestinal bleeding can be gastritis pastric ulcer disease or hiatus hernia or macular diverticulum so these are the causes of gi bleeding and if persistence iron deficiency occur after a negative endoscopy so then we test for the uh, helicobacter pylori may we consider and ttg iga level also can be done in the celiac patient because the, the, the ttg iga level increase goes increasing in the celiac disease so this this is a immunopathy logical test so these this is these points are about the iron deficiency anemia so let's just discuss about some anemia of chronic disease disease and this 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 type is very rare but this is still important because mcv goes decreases or normal mchc or mch goes decreases or normal normal or rbc count goes decreases or can be normal and rdw should increases or can be normal and blood film so anemia in anemia of anemia of chronic disorder uh, di, uh, disease guys it's linked with uh, other other disorder like uh, like uh, i have written in the slide that uh, disease associated with acd like uh, rheumatoid arthritis diabetes mellitus connective tissue diseases hodgkin lymphoma renal cell carcinoma and there are also uh, uh, apart from these there are also many diseases which are linked with the anemia of chronic disease and its name also uh, itself says that anemia of chronic yani uh, the anemia linked with any chronic diseases so this is the anemia of chronic disease and rdw goes increase or normal blood film may be uh, microcytic hypochromic or but may be normocytic or normochromic and this depend on so serum iron level goes decreasing transferrin level also goes decreasing total iron binding capacity is also low and serum ferritin level increases because ferritin act as a acute phase reactant so I <clears throat> I wish you have heard about that what are the acute phase reactant so acute phase reactant are the proteins or the polypeptide which uh, which level uh, whose level increases in the in, in any type of inflammation so these are acute phase reactant and serum ferritin also act as an acute phase reactant so now we discuss about the sideroblastic anemia so sideroblastic anemia presence of erythrocyte dimorphism with microcytic population of cells with a normal red blood population and presence of occasionally heavily stippled hyperchromic cells known as the pappenheimer body so a special a characteristic feature of the sideroblastic anemia is that there is a presence of pappenheimer body so what are the pappenheimer body you have you should remember that what are the what are the pappenheimer body pappenheimer bodies are the small single or multiple peripherally sited angular basophilic uh, basophilic means all mostly black so these are the single or multiple peripherally sighted angular basophilic erythro erythrocytic inclusion smaller than these are smaller than whole jowl body and composed of hemosiderin and their nature can be confirmed by pearl stain because uh, sideroblastic uh, in the previous slide i have told you that, that sidro means iron so these are seen in when there is uh, in the sideroblastic anemia rdw is normal and for uh, what uh, when the pappenheimer body seen in the blood film so in sideroblastic erythropoiesis uh, mds myelodysplastic syndrome and hemolytic anemia and in sideroblastic anemia serum ferritin uh, in sideroblastic sidro, anemia serum ferritin level goes increases and total iron binding capacity also goes increases but there is a defect in uh, means that iron level are normal but there is a defect in the incorporation of hemoglobin molecules into the uh, into the rbc so there is a defect in the incorporation of iron into the hemoglobin molecule. means iron levels are normal but there is a defect in the how to uh, 
the incorporation of iron in the fp molecule so due to due to that the iron level goes increase the serum ferritin uh, concentr serum iron concentration goes increases and tic also increases so let's discuss about thalassemia so thalassemia you thalassemia is very interesting topic and thalassemia in in previous slide i have told you i have told you that thalassemia is a disorder of the defective globin chain synthesis and in thalassemia mcv is very reduced and rbc count goes increases mc mchc reduced and rdw goes increased and blood film micro maybe microcytic hypochromic and tear drop cell tear drop cell or basophilic stippling target cell are observed so these are the characteristics feature of the blood, blood film of thalassemia patient tear drop cell basophilic stippling or target cell and bone marrow mildly maybe mildly hypercellular and serum iron normal serum transferrin also normal and this is the anemia in which the serum iron serum ferritin serum transferrin level are almost normal total iron bending because there is a there is no defect in the iron metabolism there is a defect in the proteinous part like this uh, this is uh, like globin chain in the defect in the globin chain so and what are the clinical features of the uh, thalassemia patient so there are these are the characteristic feature of the uh, thalassemia patient these are splenomegaly there is enlargement of spleen because a large number of rbcs goes um, uh, you know uh, spleen act as the uh, you know graveyard of uh, uh, rbc so splenomegaly can be occurred jaundice can be occurred due to breakage of rbc and chipmunk face is like a broad head and chipmunk skeletal abnormality i have seen many patient in with the with the thalassemia and their their faces are like like chipmunk like like uh, uh, i am not i have no words to explain that condition uh, so chipmunk face like broad bro, uh, uh, like there is deformity is in the in the bones abnormal skeletal abnormality in the face facial bones and chipmunk face like so we can also do magenta index so magenta what uh, what do you mean by magenta index so magenta index is the uh, ratio of mcv to rbc and it is less than 12 in the thalassemia patient and on hplc we do for the thalassemia we do hplc hplc i uh, uh, i wish you have heard about what is hplc so hplc is high pressure liquid liquid chromatography or high performance liquid chromatography or on hplc high fetal hemoglobin with minimal or, or absence of hemoglobin a or increase a hb a2 is a feature of beta thalassemia beta thalassemia has a characteristic feature of presence of fetal hemoglobin and uh, there is a increased presence of hb a2 so this is the characteristic feature of beta thalassemia and apart from beta thalassemia there is also a alpha thalassemia so what are the characteristic feature of the alpha thalassemia so alpha thalassemia characteristic feature are like uh, there is a presence of hbh and hb bart or concomitant hemoglobin of athi like hbf hbs hbc hbd HB are the diagnostic feature of alpha thalassemia so let's discuss about the distinguishing between the thalassemia and the iron deficiency anemia so these are the distinguishing feature about the thalassemia and the iron deficiency anemia this is rbc count go, goes increases in the thalassemia uh, uh, like 5.0 uh, this is the value and in iron deficiency, deficiency anemia uh, rbc count goes decreases from the 5 point you know and uh, in mid cell volume mcv goes uh, less than 70 in the in the thalassemia patient and in iron deficiency anemia the mcv goes increased from the 70 above 70 and rdw goes increase in the thalassemia so this is a distinguishing feature this is very helpful if you are a physician and iron deficiency anemia is less than 70 percent in the uh, you know rdw is less than seven less than 70 17 percent in the iron deficiency anemia so you can also connect me on this handle this, in front of you this is id i i have written at the rate by brush it so if you have any queries so please please dm me so in this in in this slide i have discussed about the pathogenic classification of microcytic anemia so this is iron studies and so 
how we approach if uh, on the basis of reticulocyte count means microcytic hypergomic anemia based on the reticulocyte count so if reticulocyte count are normal or low or so and if there are two chances reticulocyte counts can be low or normal or can be high if reticulocyte counts are low so there is when there is a reticulocyte count is low and there is a decrease in serum iron decrease in total iron binding capacity decrease in ferritin level then it's it's surely we we say that it is a iron deficiency anemia and if the reticulocyte counts are low or normal and if there is a decrease in iron or there is total iron binding capacity is normal or there is increase in the ferritin level and there is increase in sedimentation rate ESR, ESR and there is also there is increase in the CRP and other, other studies related well, means related with that inflammation so this is surely the anemia of chronic disease and in the previous slide uh, I had told uh, discuss with you that anemia of chronic disorder linked with other disorders like renal cell carcinoma and there are many like Hodgkin lymphoma so low 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 reticulocyte count or normal along with normal serum iron level normal total iron binding capacity uh, normal ferritin level or and when we do HB electrophoresis and so we can surely say that this is a thalassemia so thalassemia can be alpha beta hbe syndrome or HBE, hbc disease so low or normal along with normal reticulocyte level along with serum iron increased serum iron normal total iron binding capacity increased ferritin level and bone marrow with uh, bone marrow with pearl stain and then it's surely we say that it is a case of sideroblastic anemia because pearl, pearl protein reaction is positive in case of when there is a deposition of iron in the tissue so this this is due to sideroblastic anemia so high level of reticulocyte count uh, when there is high level of reticulocyte count then they review blood smear for the um, uh, for the die die for the i think uh, morphology this. so lab test for uh, increase rbc when there is a high reticulocyte count it means there is a destruction in the rbc and rbc destruction increases and which can leads to increase bilirubin level and there uh, decrease haptoglobulin level and ldh also increases so it's it's can be homozygous beta thalassemia or it can be hemolytic elliptocytosis disorder or it can be hereditary spirocytosis so this is the hyper microcytic hyperchromic anemia classification on the basis of reticulocyte count so i hoped you understand very well this topic and let's discuss about the iron studies in the microcytic anemia so this is the distinguishing features about the if the four uh, for the four different types of microcytic anemia if iron deficiency anemia in iron deficiency anemia fertile level goes decreases uh, serum iron goes increases total iron mending capacity goes increases and rdw also increases greater than 15 and in anemia of chronic disorder uh, fertile level should be no, uh, can be normal or can be increased or serum ferritin serum iron level goes decrease rdw is normal and total iron binding capacity goes decreases and in sideroblastic anemia ferritin level can be normal or can be increased serum iron level increased total iron binding capacity normal and the rdw is also normal in thalassemia all the things are goes increased or can be normal but the rdw goes decreases or can be normal so this is guys the pathogenic classification of this this is the, the uh, i i have covered all the points about the microcytic anemia and in the upcoming video i am going to discuss about the normocytic anemia or the microcytic anemia so i hope you understand this lecture very well and if you if, if, if you if you have any query then put your question in the comment box and i will try to explain you and if you have personal guide personal any query or any guidance i want any guidance from me then you can dm me on insta handle so id is at the rate bioverus8 and if you really uh, really uh, really like this video then press the like button and please share this video to your friends and 
I, I I'm trying to I'm trying to take lecture in English because more population is dependent on the English lectures and we I can also explain in Hindi but some students uh, are not able to understand Hindi so I thought in English is very helpful for those students so thank you very much guys for watching this video till the end so I will meet you in the next video so till that stay safe stay healthy and get tuned and press the bell icon guys and do subscribe our channel thank you very much